So, who are you? I'm Simon Thompson. I'm head of the computing department at the University of Kent. I've been there for 25 years, so I've been, been in a computing academic for that length of time. Um, and I've been working in functional programming for, for a lot of that time. Um, I've been for a long time worked in Haskell, and I wrote one of the, the standard texts on Haskell. Um, and now, I've, most recently, I've been working on building tools to support people who write functional programs. So I've been building a refactoring tool for Haskell, and latterly, I've been doing the same for Erlang. So the focus of my research has moved into, into Erlang. Okay. Um, so what is it about academia and Haskell and functional programming languages that, uh, that are a good match? I mean, the functional programming languages make you think about things in a completely different way. Um, and it's interesting, that you, you often see students, the, the, the light bulb lighting up above their head when they finally get it. And they begin to see that um, you can write things in a much more elegant way using a functional language. Which you can express your ideas much more concisely. But also that um, when you start looking at a world where concurrency and parallelism are becoming very important, languages where you don't have side effects or you have controlled side effects, those things allow you to, to map onto concurrent architectures much more effectively. So you can see this with Erlang now, that it, it's possible to run Erlang on, on multi-core very, very easily. And I think the, the Java people are struggling with this. Um, so I think it, it's interesting that functional languages, because of their, their elegance and, and clean semantics, map much more, much more effectively onto, onto that sort of model. And how do you find the students uh, at learning functional programming languages and a different mindset? Some love it and some hate it, I have to say. Um, I think it's harder. There's less place to hide when you're writing a functional program. You've got to have your ideas right. You can't write a few lines of code and try it, try it out. You've got to have thought about what you're trying to do. Um, I think that being said, it's often interesting that if you get people who've not programmed before, then programming in a functional language can be, can be very natural for them. Whereas people who've learned to program in Java or C find it a complete anathema. Um, so there, there can be that sort of problem. And you see that with, with students, but also with more experienced programmers. You know, they're familiar with, with one way of thinking, and asking them to move into a different paradigm can be a challenge. Um, I think with Erlang, people are beginning to see that it's worth taking the challenge, because you can do quite different things using that language from, from a, tradi a more traditional language. And uh, I believe you're, you're working on a book for I am with, with Francesco. Well, I think it's... Francesco has been very keen to write a book on, on, um, based on, on the training he's done over the years um, with, through uh, his company and now through Skills Matter, uh, which is a, a training company in London. Um, and I've, I've joined that. And I guess I'm bringing in experience of teaching functional programming, different languages, and experience of writing, having written before. This will be the first time I've written a book jointly with somebody else, so that's going to be interesting. But we're getting on fine so far.